What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Interview with Abhimanyu. My guest today is a highly experienced stress management consultant and an author who has written two books on how to manage stress. We were lucky to have her in the studio because we thoroughly discussed stress management techniques and let me tell you some of her ways to help people manage their stress are pure genius. For example, flower therapy, personalized music therapy and she's a big Reiki believer. She even shared some of her experiences with the clients where some of them were stressed because of uh, relationship issues or uh, their career or their family. Uh, some were even stressed out because they didn't have enough likes on their Instagram posts. She also spoke about the mind of someone who ends up taking the extreme step of committing suicide. If you are someone who's suffering or you know someone who is finding it hard to manage their stress levels, I would highly recommend you to get in touch with her. It was a good conversation, very intense. She's a wonderful human being with a very powerful presence. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest, Prachi Deshpande. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon. And please share this video with anyone who you think can benefit from it. Cheers. Welcome to the show, Prachi. Thank you so much. I, I was really, really looking forward to it because, you know, uh, we met at IB, I, I always forget the name of that BNI. BNI. I was about to call it IBN. So BNI. So you know, uh, usually such events or meets, right? BNI Fortune, right? Fortune chapter. So they go for I don't know, two hours, three hours, right? So when everyone enters, right, they are full of energy. But by the time you know, a ghante ka wo mark pass hota hai, you see people yawning, looking at the breakfast wala section and all. <laughs> you were full of energy till the end of you know the whole thing you and you had to speak as well at the last minute yes so since you had that group right yes i'm the president of the chapter so is it like that kind of pressure that because you are the head so you can't otherwise you don't feel like yawning because i didn't see you yawn <laughs> people were like okay <laughs> fuck this i'm done with this i can't do this anymore if i if i yawn <laughs> so no i never yawn whether i'm the president or i'm a normal member or i'm a coordinator I'm totally into it. Hmm. I'm very excited about that whole thing or not just BNI, wherever I am, I'm just very excited. So it's excited. excitement, it's excitement no, it's that right. keeps I'm you. I'm very excited even now. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> so, so uh, let's just jump on to what you do because I think it's very, very important. Uh, stress management. See the word stress, right? The word stress, bolte stress aa hai. Have you ever noticed? It's, it's like a trigger. So if I say stress, if someone says stress in front of me, you will automatically think about that thing that is troubling you, right? Even if, you know, you aren't even concerned with the conversation. So, and people, people are devastated because of this, you know, relationships take a toss, life takes a toss and, you know, uh, health, everything, everything. So, I believe that if you are helping people with stress management, you definitely have faced it, you've dealt with it and you have fought it. So, tell us all about it. How did you get into this? What actually made you think that, okay, since you were a mathematician, right? So, mathematician turned stress management yes. counsellor is, you know, something we want to know. Right. So, mathematician, I'm a, I have done my master's in mathematics. Right. I hated maths. Just saying, <laughs> hated it. So, it's all, it's in my genes. It comes very naturally to me. Of course, there are certain subjects that I am dreaded about. For huh. example, physics, huh. which is... Again, a sister of mathematics, but long story short, I got a lot of opportunities of going abroad and doing my PhD in mathematics. Okay. So I wanted to basically pursue applied mathematics. Whatever I've learned, I wanted to apply it, apply it in real life situations. How do you do that? Topics. I really want to know because we always thought that uh, hum R.D. Sharma padha karte the khub sari, right? Everyone knows yes. R.D. Sharma. So, mil gaya na kabhi mujhe. So, <laughs> so, we always thought ki this is it. After 12th, if you're not going for engineering, because I'm a science student and I took maths, right? Till 12th. So, after 12th, we knew that we are never going to use it, ever. So, where does it go? Applied mathematics, so if you're everywhere. not a scientist. I will tell you what I wanted to become. I wanted to become an astrophysicist. Right. I, I have friends who are astrophysicists. the mathematics yeah, yeah. only. Because there are a lot of calculations, there are a lot of equations. Hmm. If you have to send a person from here to Mars or from here to Moon, or do some kind of research, observe the earth from the space, right. everything requires calculations. calculations. Numbers. Wherever there is a number, there is mathematics. Right. So it's an integral part of everything that we do. So I wanted to become that, but my professors thought that I would be a better pure mathematician, somebody who works on abstract things. Hmm. Some I didn't agree on that. 
So I just thought that I'll spend some time here okay. in India only. Right. I'll maybe I'll teach somebody mathematics. I'll mm. be a subject matter expert of this field only right. in this field. And then later I'll maybe take admission once they allow me to pursue applied mathematics. Mm. That was the plan. So I got into teaching. I was a subject matter expert. And then I came in contact with a lot of students and their parents. Right. So what I observed there was irrespective of how well you teach them mm. and how well they know the subject, something is happening and they just were not able to perform. Hmm. Most of them. I'm not saying all of them. Right. If I say all of them, it means that I'm a bad teacher. So some of them, especially the students who were my favorite and who I knew could do really well in right. mathematics. Then I started understanding the psychology behind how they study and how they write their papers and their career aspirations and everything. Right. So I was basically required to do a lot of counseling of mm. students as well as of parents. While you were teaching math? While I was teaching mathematics. Okay. Because yeah. aim was simple, they had to perform. Mm. And I had to push them from 1995 to 100 out of 100. That was my aim. That is pressure. Yeah. You were giving that children stress. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that was my job. I was supposed to be happy. Okay. It's very simple. Yeah. Like, Teacher's job. Yeah, I understand. Hona hmm. right. Because you're really good at what you do. I said. So that developed my interest in psychology. Hmm. And there somewhere I felt that instead of teaching them mathematics, which I think a lot of people are doing, I might as well help them in performing better in the exam. Nice. So I studied psychology. Right. I became a certified psychological counselor. Okay. Then I started doing counseling. There so I when you become a uh, psychological counselor, psych psychological counselor, psychological counselor. So you don't uh, uh, go through the courses that you know therapists uh, undergo, right? The, the books that they have studied. Yes, all of them, but not the clinical psychology part. For okay. example, yeah. a person has schizophrenia cannot come to me. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you you. So you it's aren't... basically normal people right. who are unable to handle the pressures mm. of the life. Right. So it can be exam pressure. It can be some other sport if they're playing right. these kind of pressures for pe professionals it is the project deadline hmm. or how to cope up with the surroundings so it's mostly the, with yeah. uh, you know coping up not like yes. mental illness is no, not your mental right. illness is not right, right. okay but all sudden then they teach us everything yeah but i chose this part right. normal people who are undergoing a lot of pressure hmm. and i need to work on their confidence their self-esteem their anxiety levels right. so that they perform at their peak hmm. in whether it's an exam or an interview or their projects in the office. Right. So like that. So So I studied that. There I realized that it's not enough for me just to do counseling. Counseling hmm. doesn't really solve all the problems. So I am a Reiki practitioner from my twelfth standard. From your twelfth standard. Yeah, twelfth standard. It's been now 13, 14 years. I won't tell exactly how many years because that will reveal my age. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we are always curious about that. <laughs> so I became a Reiki master after right. that. I studied few more things like batch flower remedies, music therapy. Being a math mathematician, I'm very good we, with numbers. We would like to know about all of them, but yeah. you know, let's just... So then I started applying that because my aim was to clear the emotional junk that is there in the person. Okay. Every, all of us carry that from our childhood. Right. You know, from the time you're born till date. Right. There's a lot of emotional junk. Hmm. So that can be cleared only with the help of these techniques. Hmm. So counseling plays a major role that helps me understand my clients. But then if... I have to work on them. This is what I require. So I started doing all the certifications, learning all these things. So I have my own set of healing therapies and modalities, which I use on the clients. Right. And so you innovated these techniques. Not all of them. Not Reiki, of course. That's Reiki a thing that there. you learn, right? But, but then what I learned, I have my own system of Reiki. Right. 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 So oh. after I became a Reiki master, right. I did my specialization in distant attunements. Okay. So I can be here in India and I can teach Reiki to anyone in the world. Okay. So healing can be given by anyone, right. but there are very few Reiki masters in the world who can do distant attunement. So that's my specialization. After that, I came up with certain symbols, my own system of Reiki. Okay. So and if I'm not yeah. wrong, and if my stalking skills are on point, you have a tattoo as well that says yeah, Reiki to all. Oh, Reiki I'm to all. Totally. Nice. Just, <laughs> that shows so you how I passionate learned, you are about Reiki, right? Yeah. Very very passionate. <laughs> I learned it in my 12th standard hmm. till date. There's not been a single day of my life when I've not healed myself with the help of Reiki. Okay. So I, I'm a complete believer in it. How does it work? See, I have no idea about Reiki, right? Never experienced it. Never experienced this side of healing. How does it work? If I come to you, just, you know, if you have to make a layman understand, what does, you know, 
what it takes to just you know heal a person if i'm like okay i'm stressed i had a breakup right i come to you so you make the person lie down and you move your hands over the body what i don't know how how does it work so the process is actually very simple there are multiple ways of healing a person but i'll tell you what i do because yeah. that's my uniqueness yes yeah so abhimanyu has come to me he's gone through a breakup right god forbid but you've come to me as a client and gone through a breakup So when you go through something like a breakup it's going to affect some of your energy centers. Right. So what is an energy center? Before that let's go more in depth and understand what is energy hmm. and why do we need to know about it. Okay. So first and foremost we are alive because there is life force energy inside of us. Hmm. So when we breathe we are not balloons ki hawa aa gayi and then we exhale and then we are surviving. Hmm. No. When we breathe in we take in a lot of life force energy which is there everywhere in the surroundings. Okay. So in reiki we channelize the energy which is there in the surroundings mm-hmm. and we use it to increase the energy within us and to clear the emotional blockages oh, which are so formed. you're not playing with the person's body but the atmosphere around so that the person yes. can okay so we are just a medium to okay. channelize the energy right and we make use of it to heal ourselves and others okay so abhimanyu has come for me because he's gone through a breakup with the help of reiki i'll clear the negative emotions which are stored in your mind hmm. you know when you go through a breakup you tend to feel that oh i am unlovable i am not worth it hmm. because the other person has left me i am not good enough right. so it affects your self confidence your self esteem right. self worth self respect right. everything and plus there's this ocean of sadness that a person experiences so one of your energy center which is heart chakra hmm. that gets severely affected in some cases even completely blocked So with the help of Reiki, we heal all these negative emotions, right. so that you start believing in yourself again. Okay. You start believing that I'm good enough, I'm lovable, and I can move on with my life. Is verbal communication a part of healing? While you know practicing Reiki on someone, so the client has to vent out if okay. he feels right. the need that he can tell me that Prachi, this is what I'm going through. Okay. Okay. And once I know that, hmm. I heal all his energy centers. Right. Now, how do I do that? I do that with the help of Reiki and sound therapy. So huh. combining that, I call it music therapy. So okay. that's a very peaceful meditation music. I have adjusted the frequencies of the music, turned it into something that will heal a person when he listens to that. Right. Okay. And there's also energy healing in that. Hmm. So you come to me, we have that talk. I understand what you're going through. After that, I make a proper personal level music for you, which only you can use. Hmm. it's safe for everyone anybody can listen to it but then it is going to give you the desired results right. so personalized music therapy nice. i send that audio to you right along with there are the certain exercises that we go through during the counseling session hmm. for me to understand the root cause of your problem okay and how badly it's affecting you right so there are set of exercises music therapy hmm. in some cases even flower remedies so aim is to clear the emotional jump right yeah and help you believe in yourself at the same time you know it shouldn't happen that you're just cursing and abusing and swearing at the other person right fine that person has left you but then she might be i think even reasons. i think even that is very important yeah, you know to curse uh, to okay. <laughs> not like personal like go, tell me that no yeah no, yeah exactly <laughs> she's like this and she's like it that. helps it helps he's like that he's like that whatever so we don't want to be judgmental here but right. that he or she person hmm initial it's okay right but then we have to get over that exactly that is very important that, that is very important we have good feelings for that person that okay good feelings yes, good or feelings not challenge like don't care about the person good things to take okay, let let her or him be happy it's very life. difficult but i know what you mean yeah. sometime but yeah. i'm saying towards the end of my therapy it right. doesn't happen initially and hmm. you know i don't even want that to happen because it's very unnatural okay So we experience all these negative emotions. Right. We go through them, and there are series of activities which we do. You can mm. you listen to the music on a daily basis. It takes about ten fifteen minutes. Okay. And towards the end of the therapy, after three, four, sometimes six months, right. depending upon how intense the relationship mm. was and how bad the breakup was, you come to a point where you just become neutral about the entire process. Right. And you actually right. have good feelings towards that person. Mm. Good feelings, as in, you will wish well for that person. Okay. That all the best. Have a good life. 
right and unfortunately that didn't work out between that in a way is helping yourself because you aren't full of any negativity then right yeah exactly that makes sense otherwise all you will feel is that oh that person left me oh, right. that person left me i hate that person that okay. person left me you will either feel bad about yourself or you will keep on cursing that person for hmm. so we don't want this right we want peace and happiness hmm. and it takes time yeah so we undergo complete healing inside right. out and uh so that that uh, you know pushed you the students basically pushed you students into the field pushed me into that and when i learned certain <clears throat> modalities these healing modalities are beautiful reiki meditation mindfulness flower remedies i fell in love with them and okay. i was like okay this is what i want to do okay anyway, what was the last one flower what flower remedies flower remedies yeah so there are the remedies which actually are the essences of flowers okay they make you feel at peace and make you feel happy hmm. how because being happy is a natural state of our being right if i'm not happy which means something is not right with me right i have to be happy and peaceful hmm. i have to be childlike right i should be childlike huh. because that's how we are born hmm. if you observe a one or two or three year old kid most of the time they are happy they are just very confident <laughs> goes book like the they are just hungry they only cry when they are hungry eat. Yeah, and that too they know that this is what I want. I'll cry for that. I know after they that. They don't have to go to the washroom to shit. They don't, <laughs> they don't have any worries. Exactly. Yeah. So what happens is that's the natural state of being. Right. And all of us can become like that, but it's our own lifestyle and everything which is happening around us, right. which makes us. I've also noticed that sad. if you see, it's at the end of the day we are a society, right? And we need to communicate, socialize. So, I think when a grown up. starts behaving either you know uh, deliberately or you know has that nature that even if he's a he or she is a grown up right he or she is acting like a kid somehow it affects other people in a negative way in a, it does it does they don't like it and that also is harmful in a way so if a person a grown up person acts like a child is it possible that that the person might get secluded so there's a lot of difference between being child like yeah. and being childish So this comes hmm. this part comes under being childish. Okay. So my aim is to make a person feel child like hmm. which means happy and peaceful and confident from within. They are extremely confident. Okay. This one two year olds. Kids are yeah they are. Yes. yes. So yeah. we have to be child like. Right. Right. So uh, there was another thing mindfulness. Hmm. So how do you that just means being alert right being just aware of your surroundings. So how do you incorporate that in your So being so alert and so aware of what is happening that mm. there's no other thought about anything else but just this particular conversation if I'm talking to you if I'm sipping the coffee only my all thoughts and emotions are towards having this coffee and how it's making me feel How often are you in that state I am in that state when I am giving someone healing okay or I'm doing counseling right. or I'm taking a session in a corporate right. totally into it totally disconnected from the outside world. And do you Come need any me. stimulants like coffee or something to focus or no, no? Not, at not at all that zone right yeah. yeah that's the zone but that comes naturally to me because I've been practicing reiki for so many years and even meditation Yes you are tuned so it's in a because way. of the yeah, practice, practice that you practice, have practice practice no, yeah it's really difficult for you know a regular person to actually and it won't be I'm glad that you didn't say that I'm always in that zone because you're a human at the end even if you are practicing is, that brings me to what you mentioned before we started the show right so i want to know about that like what really happened you, uh, you know, let's let's take it away yes so i'll come to that before that i'll tell you that you know each and every person hmm. has that natural zone hmm. when they do a particular activity for example you being a writer you're totally engrossed in that what is that mindfulness right you are in your zone hmm. so for somebody it could be dancing somebody right. it could be singing somebody hmm. it could be driving right biking yeah playing guitar so there are multiple things we should know what makes me go in that zone right right yeah? you and find that mindfulness. yeah so i was facing this particular problem i used to sweat profusely in public so that was i think this condition i developed god knows how and why because i've always been a star student whether it's in my school or college but it happened and just i went to some function and all of a sudden i realized that oh my god i'm sweating profusely you weren't nervous people. you just you, it I was, was i was okay okay i was slightly slightly nervous because there were like 
500 or 1000 odd people right. all strangers and it was a function it was some very but when you say that you used to sweat a lot we are right now we are just talking in pure physical terms right yeah. you didn't have anything to do with stress or anything you just felt like you were sweating a lot that's yeah, it i just felt that i'm sweating okay. a lot and there's air condition the air conditioning going on okay. and below the normal temperature in fact it was very cold right. also and i don't know why so i ignored it hmm. that okay fine so i went to restroom freshened up and Normal. but then it started happening quite often hmm. i visited counselors i didn't want to study that on my own sometimes you know you just want somebody else to get you out okay. of that state okay so it started happening almost on a regular basis uh-huh. even in sessions even while you're talking to clients was time. it because you got a little paranoid like uh, okay it's happening i am not say paranoid uh, it just it just made it happen more frequently panic. Yeah. you can call it a panic attack okay and sometimes it's all in your mind i you do most of the things yeah you do a lot of work but then you still think that no no i am not up to the mark hmm. i this is only 50% of the stuff right. i can do much more but then i have done only this hmm. so maybe it was that kind of feeling or i don't know what exactly okay. i still day till they don't know the reason right but i spoke to a lot of counselors about this that something like this is happening mm. so they gave me various tags so this tag of social anxiety was given to me by somebody mm. oh you know what you might be having social anxiety mm. i researched a lot about it being in this field right. i read everything about it then i observed my condition i was my own guinea pig i used to literally write down 100 things okay i used to compare it this is there in this book this mm. is there on internet and this is what is happening to me but somehow unfortunately i didn't get the solution and it was going on for many years and with the help of reiki it just vanished magically right. so i came up with this new symbol hmm. and then i used that on me for the first time okay. it's called as being naturally attuned universe attunes you because okay. you have innovated it hmm. that second i had a feeling that this condition is going to go okay this symbol is going to take care of that so there's this best friend of mine i called her told her that you know what i've just come up with this symbol and i have this weird feeling that What, what do you mean when you that. say symbol like you came up with a symbol so reiki has a language okay so reiki symbols have a meaning hmm. for example there's uh, this symbol oh It's nice will you show it to the camera as well yeah and so you've created this no this i have not created okay. this is a gratitude symbol okay. universal gratitude mine is a very of fancy symbol so i'll draw it for you right <laughs> <laughs> so this symbol hmm. will go in your subconscious mind okay and like i said energy has its language right and it will help you feel more grateful towards everything in your life towards people towards situations is so, it more like a reminder that yes, is, it is a subconscious reminder right. it's a language of that energy hmm. that is one thing and second thing is it acts like a vehicle hmm. now for example i am sitting here i have to give you reiki healing hmm. without touching you right. so normally what happens in energy healing you need to touch the person in order to heal the person yes. so in reiki level 1 we have touch therapy level 2 onwards we make use of the symbols hmm. so that they you carry the uh, energy right, to you right no and there are a lot of symbols every uh, symbol has a different meaning different uh, purpose of healing right. and it heals you right. completely so that's how it is and this one symbol which i innovated or i was attuned to hmm. the uh, universe did that to me i would say it vanished that condition completely From never happened system. again never happened again okay it was purely mental then in a way you know but believe me abhimanyu i have gone to a level where i have spent days together hmm. in just identifying the root cause of the problem i think it happens Why with it? every yeah it's with every single problem because once a body malfunctions right so you can't get the cause or the cure immediately it takes time even for you the person who's feeling it it takes time to you know study so i'm really glad that you actually found I a way a lot of experts that just they haven't felt it they ha- yeah, they this? haven't felt it so they can just use their study and experience right so you uh, so simple Uh, that was really i come that up was, with a symbol that was magical mm-hmm. so i tell you how much time this has taken right 10 years that's a long time long. so for 10 years how frequently were you sweating profusely when you daily went? twice did that take a toll on your health by any chance not my physical, physical health yeah exactly but 
emotionally yes because uh, has see to. every time I have to take a session and my field being 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 with people right it's purely you know, you know facing thousands of people at a time right whether it's auditoriums whether it's group sessions it always has to be people hmm. every time I go in front of people I start sweating. Right. And I'm talking about stress management right. and I'm sweating. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> what a way. I mean, the way you've conquered this, now it'll make you even better stress management counsellor. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it will. Now I'm extremely happy because, you know, I was going through this problem for 10 years and Reiki has given me a solution. Hmm. So that just enhanced my confidence. It's right. taken it to another level right. saying that, bring on. I would like to <laughs> help more and more people right. who are going through such kind of things. Hmm. will happen. And uh, what about your workshops? Like, what do you teach? When so workshops are basically how to manage stress effectively. Okay. So they are for students, for professionals, for entrepreneurs. Mm. In that, there is again Reiki healing, music therapy, guided meditations. There are a lot of scientifically designed activities right. which will help a person identify the root cause of the stress in his life. Right. Currently, mm. because it changes after every six months or one year. So what with is with everyone? The, yeah, with it each does. It does. Person. Yeah. So it right does. now for you and for you or for me as well. Till yesterday, for example, mm. or. Uh, Say a month back, my problem was sweating. Hmm. That was the root cause of all the problems. Right. Now it doesn't exist. Now it will be something else. Something else. Or for some time, there won't be any cause. There won't be any stress. As long as we are alive, it will happen. I think it's yes. a part. So <laughs> it is either there or for some time. For hmm. one or two months, you just don't have stress. Yeah. So it's like easy. Yeah. Yep. And so I help them identify that. Then I help them find the balance. That what exactly will make me feel balanced. Hmm. Then I introduce all these techniques to them. Right. Give them a feel of how this is going to make you feel. Mm. And music therapy especially has proven to be extremely useful because mm. it's just a matter of 10 minutes, you know. I give you a music audio. Right. All you have to do is 10 minutes a day you have to listen to it. That's you it. You feel confident. You feel good about yourself. You don't procrastinate. Right. You are focused. Right. I know what you mean when you say music and how it helps because uh, I... Since I have to write, right? I have to imagine a lot. Mm. So there are a few, you know, uh, records, few soundtracks. They really help, mm. especially with the scene that I'm writing, or you know, even if it's a poem that I'm writing. So there are a few tunes. Most of the times, people, you know, always my friends always curse that keeps two hamisha movies ke OST original soundtracks, to background music a lot, you know, epic movies and all. So these music, uh, these soundtracks, right? They are they really move you. They move you in different ways. Sometimes they make you feel aggressive. Sometimes they make you feel very, you know, they make you feel like you're invincible. Things like that. So music, I think, is a very powerful drug. I, I, I call it drug. It is a drug in a way. So, yeah, it helps a lot, music. And the way you have figured out how to, you know, calm a person down with music and, you know, make bespoke uh, playlist for a person just for that very person. It's very amazing. That also brings me to stress busted chocolates. So how are they different from regular chocolates? <laughs> so that so you, you actually invented them? Chocolates. You invented them? Is it right to say? I would say I assembled two extremely beautiful ingredients. I'll be very honest because I there are flower remedies in those chocolates. Right. Now combinations are my own. Right. That what works for what? Hmm. So I've studied that. I'm a certified flower therapist. We're so talking essential oils or something extracts out of. Extracts of flowers. Okay. Yeah. Name one that helps in anything. Jasmine. Rescue remedy. Sorry? Rescue remedy. No, no, no. I'm talking about a flower. Since we said flower, right? Are we talking any specific kind that helps? Just Walnut. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the essence of walnut. Right. It helps you go through transitions very nicely. For, a, for example, a child is going to go to school. Mm -hmm. Somebody is going through divorce mm -hmm. or breakup mm -hmm. or somebody has joined a new job after a long break right or somebody's migrated to some other country okay so this essence is going to help you cope up with the change change basically right right and rescue remedy is a combination of five to six flowers okay again it's more of an emergency medicine hmm. if somebody meets with an accident he just can have that so that he'll be on the, about the chocolate drink. the chocolate yeah and okay. these remedies are there in chocolate okay so there's a formula which is prepared Okay. There are several conditions and for that you have different types should, of We should have told you to get some. I, I don't know, we just want to try. <laughs> I want to try stress bus chuck. <laughs> yeah, that's person. like, okay. But will people eat it with that kind of mindset that, okay, it's going to help me? Or will it, so what if someone, a non-believer like me, right? I mostly am. I'm, 
I just question things mm-hmm. as long as you know I haven't felt it personally. So if someone who says that okay, it's not going to work or something, if that person eats a chocolate, that chocolate mm-hmm. will it help? Hundred percent. It's chemicals. That's it's chemicals. right. It's okay. So it's not like more. So like, sort of the same. Yeah, exactly. Like homeopathy, they say that it's what you think. Yeah, like, well, that works. Yeah. Placebo, way, most of the time. So placebo is one thing. In placebo, you know what happens if I give you water, saying that you know what I've put flower remedies in this, it is going to work. It, yeah, that move. <laughs> but flower remedies actually work because they calm you down, they balance your emotions, mm. and they remove the emotional junk from your system for real. Right. So why isn't it big right now? Why aren't it? It is very big. There are lots of people across the world who are practicing this. There are a lot of students nowadays. Even while writing their exams, they have a water bottle with them in which. They have put infused, yeah. or they have these chocolates with them. Okay. You get teas also, no? Infused with different and perfumes stuff. and teas yeah. and a lot of things. Oh, okay. Like chamomile is actually a flower, but it helps you sleep. Yeah, it's. Uh, and it's sort of like a calming. Sleep. Yeah, it calms you down, chamomile, and it has no caffeine as well. I know. So that's how. So I'll be definitely gifting you a box of chocolates. Yeah, nice. I didn't get it today because it's quite sunny. Because it's very fascinating. And I was out from morning, so yeah, yeah, yeah. the my chocolate oh, you sent will, will, right will now. We'll yeah. remind you. We'll take it. Don't <laughs> worry. So he'll be delivering that. Yeah. And goodbye uh, stress chocolates. <laughs> goodbye stress chocolates. And uh, another thing, teenagers. Mm-hmm. So I'm. Have you ever dealt with teenagers? Like personally, most of my clients are teenagers, and they are one on one. Fantastic, counseling. fantastic. Yeah. So, I think what teenagers face mm. is more with their appearance. Mm. So, you know, how does their body look? You know, girls and guys of that age, they are, they get stressed out because of that. they don't have the career wala thing at that age, right? School, college, उस टाइम पे करियर वाला इतना नहीं पड़ता बहुत ही कम और बहुत ही अनलकी होते हैं बेचारे जो बारे में सोचना शुरू हो जाते हैं कि यार लाइफ में क्या करना है सो Then it's absolutely the fault of parents and social media as well. This nine to nine onwards. Okay. All the students. So you're saying that so career is more than the appearance, Well, I don't think so. I think it's weight. Both. Both. It's fifty fifty percent. Okay. Now, right show. now, it's fifty percent. Okay. Yes. Both. So tell us about that. I really want to know what because they they uh, so I don't know whether you watch it, but you know Game of Thrones. Everyone. Yes. So so uh, the girl who plays Sansa Stark, mm-hmm. Sophie Turner. So she gave this interview. Everything is interview now. She gave this interview, right? Interview to Dr. Phil, uh, yeah, the famous guy. So she, you know, revealed that she was so worried even after she became a star, you know, Game of Thrones. So it happened even more. So she was one, you know, hundred good comments. They didn't matter, but one false comment that said that okay, you have put on weight, you look fat, or whatever. So she actually cried on the show. This Sophie Turner girl, she cried, and you know. I just realized that I okay I I was a fat kid, and uh, I I was maybe uh, you know call me uh, an idiot or super cool or whatever but I didn't give two shits about you know कि अगर मैं मोटा हूँ तो क्या हम घर वाले बोलते थे कि हमारी इज्जत का क्या होगा इतना मोटा है because my family very into running physical and all so it never affected me but I have met people so they are in this pressure they are in this constant pressure they look in the mirror and they see something else. i think that's with stress you see or imagine something you being somewhere else right and then you want to be there so they are always seeking you know perfection ki aisa hona chahiye aisa hona chahiye so yeah tell us about your teenager experience like what was the worst thing like what are kids doing nowadays see my worst experiences have been not my clients okay but somebody i wished and prayed should have been my client okay because you know nowadays what's happening that a little setback mm-hmm. and people go to the level of committing suicide yeah so they either attempt it mm. and damage one of their body parts that's right or they actually have a very very bad end right. of their life yeah so that is one uh, area where i would like to put in more efforts and would like to have this kind of clients mm. because i can really help them right and so my otherwise my worst thing has been So shouldn't your focus be on? I'm just saying, you know, you know better. But shouldn't your focus be on parents? Like, you know, teach parents rather than students. 
let not the students be your clients but their parents suffering kids unke parents be your clients see a student commits suicide because his or her girlfriend left mm-hmm. them yeah that is one they got less marks in the exam yeah. they didn't get the admission where they desired or they get bullied yeah or, or they, they get bullied yeah. and sometimes parents don't have any role to play in this they are okay that no problem you can get admission in some other college will take one year drop if mm. you want to go abroad you want the best university in the world no problem attempt one more time parents have become like this now right. it's no more that parents are forcing them mm. yeah of course there are some parents who expect too much from their children but then believe me those children don't come to suicide yeah. it is these children are you saying commit suicide were more pampered extreme level of motivation right and courage of facing the danger hmm. because if you are going to jump off a cliff what if i survive hmm. that is the concern if That's... i die well and good but what if i survive i am going to be a damaged good for the rest of my life total handicap that courage they require so that motivation comes from within it cannot be because somebody is forcing you somebody is making you you know study hard or somebody is telling you that instead of 95 you should get 98 or 99% hmm. those kids don't i am i'm, I'm so going to turn it a little Uh, you know piche thoda sa you said that it's uh, very so the courage to no no is it the fear that if i survive hmm. i didn't get that point like people children who have this tendency to you know harm themselves or even you know eventually commit suicide so they are worried that what if i survive is that what you're trying to say yes that's very dark and disturbing so yes it's very yeah because they they want to die suppose i want to end my life hmm. what may i want to end my life hmm. my concern should be what if it what if i fail okay are they still worried you know it's very they're worried about failure they are, so are they worried about if i survive what will people say or what will people talk what about will happen to me what will people say what will my parents say and do hmm. what will my friends say and do and now there's so might as well end it for good strict about this right you, you commit suicide and there are some charges i think Yeah, it's a crime. It's a crime. It's a crime. Yeah, it's a crime. They charge you. It's an offense now. Criminal offense. Yeah, committing suicide is an offense. Yes. Yeah. It it's an offense. offense. It's a person is if they are dead. I mean, it would only be called suicide if they did die. Committing suicide. The attempt, act. The act. Attempt, yeah, the act is a criminal act. Committing suicide is a crime. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So my worst experiences so far have been, in fact, very. Uh, something like a person wanted to score marks okay. but he's not able to get that admission so mm. i give that push and with the help of music therapy and everything uh. we work on his confidence levels and how he studies and focuses and then he gets good marks something right. like that so i have not really got any worse experiences mm. so yeah this breakup thing is very common nowadays yeah. in teenagers very yes. very common that you know and they do they, the way they talk they're so intense about it that i fell in love with him i fell in love with him <laughs> he left me she left me or i had to leave and they're very intense right so to take them out is a task mm-hmm. but yeah that happens with this therapy yeah. like i know i would also be considered a children these days like in that category you are ha huh? but like they amplify things to a whole new level <laughs> like it's, it's just that you can't ignore it you can't ignore it everything is like for it's for people out of proportion yeah the thing is that it is blown out of proportion and for us you know who have you know we are just older now so we have more sense so we find it funny but the thing is that it's very dangerous you can't ignore it that's the point if kids are behaving in a very you know that kind of you can't kayo ke maa baap hote hain aise jo bolte hain you know I, i'm pretty sure if i was acting funny right my mom and dad would have slapped the shit out of me and like you know behave <laughs> get get your shit together Yeah. Yeah. but it doesn't work with every single one that's the point kids are really you know what i i honestly feel like how come when we were kids we, our brains work in the same way how right. come when we were younger we never behaved like this because there are different people right you know tendencies no, but it changed there's no, too much of fees too much of exposure also exactly they see a lot man they a lot of exposure and maybe it's also about expecting a lot out of yourself like self yeah yes yes that's very important people keep and they also tend to get very disturbed so there's this client of mine who didn't get 500 likes on insta oh my god 300 likes on facebook that was the benchmark and all his friends did were in thousands of likes right. and everything so he was so disturbed and so stressed out and almost became violent also as well 
Okay. And his parents were trying to convince him that it's not a big deal. It's just Facebook and Insta hmm. that doesn't define who you are. Right. No, that doesn't. They, 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 they. So there are a lot of exercises and actual counseling also hmm. helps a lot in that. Uh, like you were saying that being verbal, talking to a person helps on right. It's called a talk therapy. So right. it helps in these kind of cases where I actually have to play a role and talk to them, convince them hmm. that, you know, this is not the way you're thinking. Don't right. take it so seriously. Exactly. On these words, don't take it very seriously. I had posted this on the Instagram profile as well. So this guy, Joe Rogan, like, I really look up to this guy. So he said something. It really made sense. It's not for everyone to listen to it, extract humor and understand it. But I, I want you to listen to what it says, right? It says that if you are taking things really seriously, just know that you are talking monkeys on a floating organic planet that is flying in the middle on a floating spaceship that is floating in the middle of the universe i mean it's that crazy you are nothing you just you know look at the life look at the space like sky like look at space so you need to understand that you shouldn't take things so seriously it's happening life i also feel like somebody who had told me this so i was just this like talking about how india has bigger problems it was with you only i was like uh, like we have issues of national security and everything and then mm. you have these local politicians who are fighting over something right. so silly yeah so somebody told me the minute you are in that protected environment you know you start building up new problems for yourself yeah we, we were having and this together we were talking yeah. about this so it's basically like non-existent things that you somehow have a problem with suddenly see it's very uh natural that if there's a state of war in a place right so if people are fighting survival is the only thing that you know take a take a war struck area in any part of the world you won't see issues like uh, homosexuality lgbtq rising up over there you yeah. won't see them it's a fact you won't see people coming out with that because their people are oppressed and they are worried that okay i'm going to die straight yeah, away yeah, like yeah. but when there is you know when safety prevails right and people have the right to express then there are all kind of people right there are homosexuals there are there's this lgbtq community there are no like I shouldn't say normal <laughs> but yeah there are people who are you know want they just want to express themselves so they have the liberty and yeah, the freedom but, so that is what i'm saying so lately these problems have come up more in children i feel because now they have nothing else to worry about so they have kind of figured out something new that they want to stress about i think that's how stress works <laughs> and it's so stupid like all your maybe when you all i think this is like three different age categories <laughs> No, I, I don't, don't think. No, I. Same similar. Yeah. But yeah, when you all were younger, you all had different issues like, oh, um, I want to go out. Oh, what, what, what was your teenage like? Yeah, what was like, your teenage stress? My teenage stress was... Had to be a boy for sure. Getting... <laughs> well, not much that came very easily actually. Oh. <laughs> oh, <confidence. laughs> so, anyway. So, or maybe you can say the other party was too confident. Oh. But uh, that was never the cause of my stress. My yeah. stress was more of where am I going to get the admission? How much marks am I scoring? Oh, mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. am I? Yes. How am I? What I'm going to do in this particular competition? And what if I make a mistake in the in front of the entire auditorium? It's always been like that mm-hmm. in the childhood, and even now my field also has the same kind of problems. But, but yeah, I do get a lot of uh, children nowadays who are facing, who are struggling with their uh, sexual orientation. And they just are not comfortable with what they are. Mm. Some of them want to experiment something. So right. yeah, these kind of things happen in you, my field. You, you so have. they actually approach me for a very different problem like public speaking anxiety mm. or a particular phobia right. or low self-confidence, right. low self-esteem. But then phobia. actually these are the issues deep down they are struggling. The, the sexual orientation one. Yeah. So they come up with something different. But Not they, everyone, some but mostly, of them. So they reveal... You know, when we explore more and more the mm. state of mind, we mm. to somewhere, some of them right. are actually struggling with this. Right. You know, what's my take on stress? Because I am not a 70-year-old man that I have experienced everything, but so far, whatever I've experienced, right? So in three decades. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. I think it's universal stress. Everyone goes through it. It's just that, uh, you know, uh, when you are in a situation where you can't do... So we have this tendency to 
you know imagine ourselves as someone else right so we want to be there we humans are very goal oriented so either we set a goal that okay we want to be there or it's just people around us who are putting us into that pressure that okay you need to be that you need to so there's always going to be stress right and i don't think there's a magic pill that can you know take care of it i don't think there's a cure to it because it's not a disease stress is not a disease it's a state of mind right so the best remedy has to be words i'm sure there must be something else reiki as because i have never experienced reiki but for me i think words words in the form of care words in the form of motivation and words also very important in the form of reality check because sometimes people are just delusional stressed because of delusions right mm. so words in the form of reality check so teachers can play a role people like you are playing a massive role i hope you know people get to know about you and the community that you are in so that because it's very important so i mean there's nothing much to say you tell i i don't know I, i've also uh, read about your book right so yeah. so are there so two books book. there are two books actually one is about reiki hmm. second is about simple things that we can do on a daily basis simple hmm. solutions to say goodbye to stress right so what's the book called what's the title say goodbye to stress say 60 goodbye days, to 60 simple solutions so right. each day you'll have a solution okay so oh. so you practice or you just read that and you practice that you just read that there are simple tips for example like you said words are extremely important right. and that's whatever you described is my job profile <laughs> so you have to motivate you have to do this you have yeah. to do that yeah that's the counselor job profile so there are different scenarios which are discussed starting from uh, you know what do you do when you're feeling low mm. or uh, speaking of breakups i think we are talking a lot about that yeah so there is a stress or nowadays and especially youngsters yeah. so what do you do whether you should be in touch with that person or not and you know let's just switch it to social media and like likes people yeah, yeah likes, likes yeah likes. so all these things so there's a simple scenario which is given and there's a simple solution hmm. that try this and you'll feel better okay have you ever told a patient or someone who has come to you that okay uh, i'll be really blunt okay you're not that important so shut the fuck up have <laughs> you not it not blunt but you know people sometimes think really highly of themselves they think that they are very special and that puts them under stress as well have you met such cases i have met people who are a cause of lot of people stress and they come to me <laughs> i know of you i know such people right that i am stressed out and this is happening to me that is happening to me and when you explore their life yeah. and their story and everything around them you come to know that do you are stressing people out there that's where the childish yes. part comes right not child like but childish i'm very very straightforward i have to be straightforward i hmm. have to give them reality check right saying that you know don't play a victim hmm. when you actually are responsible for yeah, doing like, a particular thing it's a matter i say that other people have come to me yeah <laughs> so i think even if you are a victim you should try it's very difficult but you should try not to play a victim in any case right and many in some cases they actually victims are other people yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so, why i said reality check delusions right yeah uh, that happens a lot so that's a problem to get away with something claiming to be the victim no? then being the perpetrator that's that, that's why they, they get used to it right they they, they get you know attuned it's also a part of seeking attention right like Oh my God, that yeah, and people don't accept it. That you know, they're like, I'm, I, I have I a, gen- I have a genuine problem, uh-huh. but they don't realize. I yeah. Poor me. That Poor me. Awesome. Yeah, and very interesting topic. Okay, what's your take on drugs when it comes to? And I don't mean uh, prescribed drugs. I mean like proper marijuana and stuff because people tend to. I'm sure you don't tell anyone. Okay, you should smoke up, <laughs> but. things are happening outside india where uh, weed marijuana they even go to the extent of dmt experience which is like i i don't think we should discuss it because i'm i have no research material on that but people you know experience different stuff what i really want to know is since people outside are getting benefits shouldn't we i'm i know we don't have research material because it was always a crime right but what what, what what's your general take on this So my thing is very simple that why do you need to use something external to make you feel in a certain way there are a okay. lot of things like meditation or journaling right. or doing engaging yourself in a physical activity like running or cycling right. or doing something that you love which is anyway going to take you 
there to that state maybe because it's instant it's people happening, tend to yeah, it happens to people basically who don't have any purpose in life hmm. who don't have a proper vision and a goal right it just i just want to have fun and i just want to feel good all the time right and this is but no i'm the talking the first thing a person can do of course it does have several benefits but i will never recommend it to anyone it's kind of running away from the problem See why I won't recommend it to anyone because hmm. after a point you cannot control yourself. Yeah, and you might get. I want get to give only those kind of solutions and healing techniques to a person, sustainable, which are sustainable hmm. and which will be in his control right. completely. Right. Right. And there won't be any side effects. That makes absolute sense. Yeah. This has a lot of side effects. So. No, yeah. Yeah. Question. Right. Hmm. I think we've covered so everything. So there is yeah, this please. magical uh, thing which happened ah. again. So with the help of these techniques. that there was a client of mine obviously i won't be naming anyone here it's okay so you can <laughs> she had this problem okay. of too much partying and weeds and days and that and lot of things she used to be huh. when she went through this entire process hmm. her entire life changed right it's been 5 6 years she's been my client and one fine day i just received this message saying that pachi thanks a lot and this is how this is what i'm doing nowadays mm. i i also write a lot of uh, books and blogs she's also a very very famous blogger that's the reason i told i will not take the name mm. and she's working she is doing exceptionally good job wherever right. she is and that's that's a transformation and she herself has made this choice that i don't need these things to make, right. to feel good about myself so and it, most of the kids who love all these things mm. basic factor is to feel good about yourself right which means a person is suffering through low self esteem mm. low self worth and low self confidence right. actually when you work on these things mm. half your problems are solved you you won't need it then yeah, yeah but uh, there is uh, another face to it as well which i think is true because mostly people suddenly go very defensive when we are talking about weed because it's a crime right right now it's like illegal but there's also a thing that people blame these substances but the problem lies within the person who's using it yes. he has the tendency to abuse it it's the same with alcohol everyone is drinking alcohol no one is acting crazy but there are a few one in 100 who are acting crazy so i think it's very much you know in well, do you subjective think what is the need for you to be drinking alcohol is my question in the first place people like it. i mean it's so people drinking it because they like it or people smoking weed because they like it is a different story but using it as a solution for a problem it suppresses right same we were discussing about correct. stress eating right remember see but then you can't like rely on something all the time so every time i'm stressed out you expect me to like you all the joint and start smoking up i'll be high all day but that's what people do that's what but people so do so that is where the abuse kicks in right i mean that's a remedy as well right that's what i'm saying it's running away it's See, you're not curing the oh, you should use only those things which are in your control mm. and which are not going to make you go out of control mm. that agar maine bahut zyada meditation kiya for mm. example so something is going to happen to me right. and the people around me no there nothing is going to yeah happen. never going but happen. if i'm abusing drugs too much of drugs yeah. it is going to harm me and the people in my life mm. so that's yes. how you should think and uh before we wrap up i want you to you know just regular a, a message you know from your side so before that one more thing i would like to say yes. that since we are talking about lot of this therapies yeah. and everything this uh, this special music which i provide to spas so when a person goes to a spa it's uh, well, he goes through that process of massage and uh, you know now is that body body polishing and a lot of beautiful right. things that happen then many your body your cell like when you said music i had that kind of music in my mind so yeah that music so what happens is that i provide them also special meditation music okay in which you will be healed from within so mm. suppose now you are taking a massage so not just your body will feel good but it will be like a mind spa as well so how so different you, is that music from the music that massage parlors already play It's a normal. That's a normal instrumental music. It's just that it's just very. Just a feel good. Ki, right. Oh yeah, I feel peaceful when I listen to that. Nice, nice. But it's making you feel peaceful, but it's not actually healing you. So it's specifically curated for yes. healing. Yes. Okay. Heals you. Ah. So it's a mind and body experience. Right. So do you also play some instruments? Like how do you record it? So I have this group of people who compose and who oh. come up with this very uh, beautiful tracks. 
Plus, I'll be very honest with you, there are some so beautiful tracks on YouTube and this mm. lot of music channels. And that's what I had in mind when you said that I, you pick music up. So from. what I do is that if I go to a spa, mm. they have their favorite music, which all their clients love. Mm. So what I can do to them is that I can embed energy uh, healing and uh, I can adjust the frequencies of the sound in such a way that they are playing the same music. Mm. But they are getting this kind of effect. Right. So we are not changing anything there. Mm. Suppose you tell me your favorite song. Right. I just change, make slight changes in the frequency, Tempo and and I'll be giving the same song to you. Mm. So you are playing your song, mm. but now it's a remedy for you. Right. It's the same like you know you hear it's listen to a rock version or an acoustic no, version. That's no, no, no. no. So if so, a song will give you different effect when you hear it in a rock version, but then you listen to it in acoustic, right? So it has that yeah, mellowing yeah, yeah. Slight, effect. Yeah, yes. yeah. Slight difference. Right. right. Awesome. So this is actually playing around with the frequencies. Right. And a message to everyone, kids, elders, when it comes to stress, everyone. There's one thing that you would like to say. Stress is a part of everyone's life. The moment you start believing in yourself and feel good about yourself, you can conquer the entire world. No problem is going to appear bigger to you. These two things, self-confidence, self-esteem. That's the key to stress relief. Nice. Thank you, Prati. This was amazing. Thank you for doing this with us. Thank you.